And uh, yeah, he's given it away already. Uh, our next speaker is very, very high level indeed. As European Commissioner for Economy, he's going to talk to us about the EU's economic potential. Now, two years into the pandemic have left their mark on state coffers. So it's not just that everybody actually started to realize that we have to use digitalization, for example, with online conferences. We're all familiar with these conferences by now. Uh, but it also costs a lot of money and it left its mark on state coffers. The bloc, European Union, of course, can't afford to ignore existing and ongoing challenges because they didn't go away just because we have an additional challenge right now. And this is why the EU's recovery plans must also focus on sustainability and digitization. So let's find out now how those plans will include the future of financial services in a strong and a unified tech Europe. We look forward very, very much uh, to hearing the words now of the European Commissioner for Economy, Paolo Gentiloni. Dear Bitcom conference participants, great pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you today. We are living in truly unprecedented times and the pandemic has come as a double economic shock. On the one hand, it has caused the most severe recession in EU history, with GDP falling by more than 6% last year. On the other, it has brought forward a number of structural changes that will have a profound impact on our economies and lifestyles. And nowhere is this more evident than in all things digital. As the European economy rebounds from the depths of the recession, our task will not only be to pave the way for a strong and sustainable recovery, but also to accompany these societal transformations. And I am optimistic that we can meet these challenges. And let me explain why both on the health front and the economic front, Europe is turning the corner. Millions of Europeans are being vaccinated every day. Roughly half of all adults have had at least one dose in the EU. As COVID case numbers decline, restrictions are being eased and the most affected sectors are opening up for business again. Our economic sentiment indicator shows that confidence is back above its long-term average. Growth, as you know, is set to be above 4% both this year and next year. And this would mean a return to pre-pandemic GDP levels by the end of this year. Of course, the road to the recovery is not without risks. The overarching risk to the economy is that the pandemic leaves long-term scars, in particular on capital, technology and labor. These scarring effects could stem from cutbacks in business investment, investments in research and development, and the disruption to young people's education and training. The financial sector has been so far coped well. It remained resilient and provided ample financing to corporates. Nevertheless, risks to the financial stability will need to be closely monitored. These risks could arise from a sudden rise in non-performing loans, a tightening of credit conditions or abrupt correction in asset valuation. Fiscal and monetary policy support has been crucial to cash on the impact of the pandemic. And going forward, we will need to manage the gradual withdrawal of this support very carefully if we are to minimize these risks. The implementation of the Recovery and the Resilience Facility will also play a key role towards limiting scaring effects and putting our economies on a path to sustainable growth. With the final green light from the last national parliaments, the Commission is now empowered to tap the financial markets 
and the RRF can come to life. In parallel, we are working at full speed to assess the recovery plans prepared by member states and make sure that the first funds start flowing in the summer. And this is not just about kick-starting growth. It's about transforming our economies. It's about getting Europe ready for the challenges and the opportunities of the 21st century. And this is exactly the reason why the green and digital transition are at the front and center of the recovery plans. More than half of RRF funds are earmarked for investments and reforms that pursue these objectives. Our estimate is that the RRF can add up to 2% to EU GDP over the next five years and lift potential growth beyond that time. It will be a crucial instrument to make the most of structural trends that the pandemic has stepped up. Digital adoption has taken a quantum leap. Across sectors, the pandemic has given a strong boost to the digitalization of work processes. These changes can bring in efficiency gains and increase productivity if supported by the right investment in complementary capital, such as IT infrastructure and digital skills. The recovery and resilience plans will be key here, as they aim to promote digitalization in the public and private sectors, especially SMEs, encourage the uptake of new technologies and support business R&D. These developments are, of course, also affecting the financial sector. And the future of finance is digital. Consumers and businesses are increasingly accessing financial services digitally. Innovative market participants are deploying new technologies and existing businesses' models are changing. Digital finance has helped citizens and businesses tackle the unprecedented situation created by the pandemic. For example, online identity verification has allowed consumers to open accounts and access financial services remotely. A growing share of in-store payments are now digital and contactless, and online purchases went up very significantly. FinTech solutions have helped to broaden and speed up access to loans, ensuring the safe and reliable operation of digital infrastructure has also become more important as more people access financial services online and financial sector employees themselves work remotely. If there was still any doubt, it is now clear Digital finance has a lot to offer and the people and businesses of Europe are ready for it. Europe must take full advantage of this in its recovery strategy to help repair the social and economic damage brought by the pandemic. Digital technology will be key for relaunching and modernizing our economy across sectors. It will move Europe forward as a global digital player. At the same time, users of financial services must be protected against risks stemming from increased reliance on digital finance. So developing a competitive EU financial sector that gives consumer access to innovative financial products while ensuring consumer protection and financial stability is at the heart of the digital financial strategy we presented in September last year. Europe and its financial sector must embrace these trends and the opportunities offered by the digital revolution. Europe must drive digital finance with strong European market players in the lead. Our aim is to make the benefits of digital finance available to European consumers and businesses. 
we should promote digital finance based on European values and a sound regulation of risks. Embracing digital finance would unleash innovation and create opportunities to develop better financial products for consumers, including for people currently unable to access financial services. It unlocks new ways of channeling funding to EU businesses, in particular SMEs. Boosting digital finance would therefore support Europe's economic recovery strategy and the broader economic transformation. It would open up new channels to mobilize funding in support of the Green Deal and the new industrial strategy for Europe. As digital finance cuts across borders, it also has the potential to enhance financial market integration in the Banking Union and the Capital Markets Union, and thereby to strengthen Europe's economic and monetary union. Finally, a strong and vibrant European digital financial sector would strengthen Europe's ability to retain and reinforce our open strategic autonomy in financial services, and by extension, our capacity to regulate and supervise the financial system to protect Europe's financial stability and our values. Thank you. I'm looking forward to your questions. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner uh, Gentiloni, for your words. And of course, this being a digital finance conference, when you say the future of finance is digital, and that also and especially goes for the European Union, then that is music to our ears, of course. You say you are looking forward to our questions. Indeed, we do have questions. The first one. Do you think that the digital euro is important for the EU and what progress can we expect in the field of CBDC? Yes, indeed, the Commission supports the exploration of a digital euro project. A digital euro is an important element of a strong and innovative digital finance sector and more efficient and resilient payment systems in Europe. In addition, it can also support wider policy objectives. It can contribute to increasing digitalization, open strategic autonomy, and the international role of the euro. It should also strengthen confidence in the single currency and address the specific needs of the European economy. For this reason, we have engaged in a close cooperation with the ECB on this project. We are looking at the impact of the digital euro and its interaction with a whole range of issues, payment systems, distribution channels, financial inclusion, anti-money laundering, data protection, taxation, monetary policy, financial intermediation and innovation, and the international role of the euro and more broadly the EU autonomy and financial stability. The work has just started and let be crystal clear, it will take time to solve all these issues which are complex, interrelated and go beyond the digital euro itself. Absolutely. It's certainly a project we want to push forward. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for that. And of course, uh, you mentioned a lot uh, the, you know, the, the need uh, for sustainability. You mentioned the EU Green Deal. So what do you expect from the finance industry with regards to mastering our most pressing challenges, such as uh, post-pandemic recovery, digitization and sustainability? Yes, thank you for this question. And let me start with mastering the recovery. EU financial institutions and banks in particular should continue to finance the EU economy, especially in the recovery period, while managing appropriately non-performing loans risks. However, 
In the last few months, we are seeing a decline in bank lending. And this is partly due to a drop in demand for, from corporates, but also due to tougher credit standards being applied by banks. Many measures taken so far had the effect of delaying the transmission of losses incurred by businesses and households to the banking sector. A large number of loan moratoria granted to businesses and consumers have recently expired or will expire soon. Still, some borrowers have not yet fully recovered from the crisis, given prolonged lockdowns, and might be unable to resume the payments of their loans. These borrowers will run the risk of becoming insolvent, and many of them will be firms with viable business models which would be able to repay their loans without the pandemic. It is therefore important to consider measures which would help viable borrowers through the transition period until they have recovered and are able to service their credits. Now, coming to the second part of your question, it's clear that the digital and green transition will require massive investment. The RRF, as I said, is a strong tool to support this. But a large part of that investment must come, obviously, from the private sources. As you know, we will issue 30% of the RRF bonds as green bonds. And also our Invest EU guarantee aims at crowding in private finance for EU priorities. The financial industry has a key role to play here in channeling savings to investments for the Green Deal and the digital age. For us to achieve the transition to a greener and digital economy, we need to mobilize capital markets. This requires deepening the Capital Markets Union, which has made significant progress since the first 2015 action plan but is still not complete, as you know. In addition, sustainable finance will be key to channel the investment needed for the green transition and more broadly to meet the objectives of the Paris Agreement and our other environmental goals. Investors have a huge appetite for sustainable investment. And I think that as policymakers, our task is to set the targets and provide clarity on the direction of travel and to provide credible and usable tools and frameworks. One of these tools is the taxonomy regulation, which is an essential tool to translate our green objectives into criteria for investment purposes. It significantly increases the potential that green financing offers to support transition, in particular for carbon-intensive sectors where change is urgently needed. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Gentiloni, for uh, basically being part of this Digital Finance uh, Conference 2021.